Good afternoon and welcome to another InReach field experience webinar. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite products, the GPS Map 66i. Uh, we're going to be doing an in-depth dive today, talking about lots of details about the device and how to use it, the apps that work with it, and the InReach ecosystem as a whole. Before we get started, a few important notes. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and we will post that recording on our support site and YouTube channel. The slides that we're going to look at today, there'll be a lot of them, so it's important go to the handout section of GoToWebinar and download those slides so that you can have them as a resource for later. And we're going to save time, as always, at the end to answer any of your questions. So please type those questions into the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar um, uh, interface. And uh, we are also very excited to have with us again members of Garmin's uh, product support team and they will actually be answering some of your questions right during the the, uh, the webinar through chat, and then we'll save some of those questions out for the end, and I will uh, answer them as well. So a lot uh, to cover today, and so we are going to to get right into it. And and actually before uh, before I get there, a little introduction. My name is Chip Noble. I'm a product manager here at Garmin. I work with the InReach devices and with the with other uh, the, of the handheld devices in, the, in Garmin's outdoor lineup. As you can see by this picture from last weekend's ice climbing uh, training course that a handful of us from the Garmin office here in Maine uh, took part in. This was actually in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, uh, but I'm an avid outdoorsman and you can see on my shoulder strap of my backpack a GPS map 66i, so I am also a GPS map user. Let's dive right in. A uh, lot of content in today's webinar. We're going to talk about all of these pieces. I'm going to move relatively quickly through the first part of the presentation, saving some time for some exciting new things that have been released in firmware updates to the 66i since we released it, as well as some improvements to the Explore app that work with it. But in general, the GPS Map 66i is a powerful tool. It, is, uh, it has in-reach satellite technology built into it. That's what allows us to send and receive our messages when we're outside of cell phone coverage. It is Garmin's best handheld standalone use device with a three and a half inch color display, transflective sunlight readable display that makes it great for scenarios like last weekend where it was bright and sunny and snow, so a lot of glare, but still able to very easily see the display. It is Garmin's flagship premium handheld GPS device. That means not only does it have the mapping, the navigation, the messaging, the tracking and safety, but it also has advanced features like waypoint averaging, area calculation. There is a, a sun moon page, that sort of thing. We're gonna talk a lot about those features as we move through the webinar. The device has Garmin's maps. That is the Garmin Topo Active map, as well as a great feature that allows you to download um, satellite imagery direct to the device using Wi-Fi and, uh, and bird's eye uh, imagery. So, so that's a great feature as well. Device offers automatic routing that lets you calculate turn-by-turn -turn directions for roads and trails uh, and for your outdoor activities. As I mentioned, this device pairs with the Garmin Explore app, and there are a lot of cool new things we're going to look at today. We have managing waypoints, routes. We have a new uh, course creator feature to talk about, automatic map downloads, even a start navigating feature in the app that sends that navigation message to your 66i. At, on the hardware side, the device is rugged. It is uh, impact resistant and in particular has a water rating of IPX7. That means you can submerge the device to three feet for 30 minutes and it will work great when you when you pull it out. So great for stream crossings and canoe trips and that sort of thing, so long as it's three feet for no more than 30 minutes. From there, we'll look a little bit at our in-reach um, in technology, and that is all about the ability to take advantage of that Iridium satellite network, and that has 100% uh, global coverage. That is for our messaging, our tracking, our safety features like SOS. Uh, two-way messaging. Not only can you send a message, but you can receive a reply. You know if the message you sent was delivered. Those are important distinctions for in-reach devices, um, for all of our in-reach devices. SOS, that connects you with the Garmin 
International Emergency Response and Coordination Center, the IERCC. Those are the people who are monitoring 24-7. We have some slides about SOS we'll talk about later. Tracking, that lets you send your location to a map share site so your friends and family can follow along. It's not just about you and your trip, but it's also about the loved ones that care about you and want to know how your progress is going and, um, and, and they can participate in your adventure from home. It's a great feature. And then in-reach weather forecast, that's the ability to check and see either a, a land-based forecast or marine forecast, and we're going to look at those as well. Quick note at the bottom, uh, the in-reach features definitely require an active satellite subscription, and we always remind people that there are some parts of the world that don't actually allow satellite communicators, so when you're planning your big bucket list trip, it's your responsibility to check for any kind of regulations around the use of this type of device. We will look briefly at uh, the button layout and how our device is configured. The important piece from this slide, that Iridium antenna and GPS antenna, GNSS antenna, make sure that stays oriented towards the sky. This is a helical antenna. It has a uh, mushroom-shaped kind of uh, uh, um, reception out of the top of it. So if you turn that device upside down in your pack accidentally, you're now listening for a signal and broadcasting your Iridium message into the ground. You want that pointed up. Make sure it has a clear view of the sky. I think the other important piece on this slide is that SOS button. It does have a protective cap that uh, keeps it safe. When it's in your pack, if you have an emergency, uh, your device, you just unlock the, the SOS door, pull it open, mash the button, and after you hold it, you'll see an SOS countdown timer pop up. Um, that's how you know SOS has been declared. So the Iridium antenna and the SOS cover, and the rest is pretty straightforward. Looking at the keypad on the device, again, straightforward. The important piece here is that menu button. We want to make sure everyone knows about the shortcut. If you press the menu button twice, it takes you to the home screen. The rest of it, zooming in and out, find, search, page, um, straightforward. The, the home screen or any of the pages on the 66 have a header bar that shows you important status information about the device. That's where you see things like the GPS signal strength, what your battery life is, the time of day. If any of the um, special features of the device are enabled, if you have Bluetooth enabled, Wi-Fi, one that I like to keep an eye on is if I'm sending uh, in-reach messages or if I have any unread messages I should go look at, those icons will appear in the header bar. Another piece that we don't talk about that often is the status LED on the 66i, and there are several different flashing patterns that help us learn more about our device. The double flash means you have a message waiting. Go check out the messages tab to see what the message is. Uh, if you have put your device into expedition mode, we do flash the LED uh, a green single flash, and that's just to remind you that your device is powered on, even though the display is off. If you see a flashing red LED, it could be one of two things. It might mean that your device is having a, a difficulty seeing the Iridium satellites, look for a clear view of the sky, or it could just mean that your battery is low, at which point you should charge your device. Uh, and, then, uh, and then the alternating red and green, that means your device is in SOS. Hopefully you know that. I assume you would know that, but uh, a little reminder. And um, so keep an eye on those LED status indicators. The battery life on the device, there are several different options for configuring the device for battery use. By default, you get that 35-hour battery life. That is with a 10-minute uh, in-reach tracking interval and, and default settings. There is also expedition mode, which does some things like it turns off the screen, puts the device into low power mode, it reduces the interval of, of track point recording. And if you use that expedition mode and a 30-minute tracking interval, you can get up to 200 hours of battery life with the device. So that's a great, uh, a great battery life. Uh, and you see also battery saving mode. That is an option that turns your screen uh, backlight off and, and shuts the screen off. And that's, that's another way to save battery. We, uh, we point out the device can be charged with a solar charger. And a lot of people ask questions about that or a power bank, that kind of thing. The important piece is the device needs to have a five volt, uh, five volts of charging power. And we actually tell people, a lot of people, if it has a USB output, 
then um, then it will work with our device. That's the key. Some operating temperature specs and a tip about um, what kind of battery charge to have if you put your device into storage. From here, we're going to look at the main pages of the device. Uh, hopefully, for all of you that have the device, you've explored these already. But from the main menu, this is where you can access all of the different activities on the device, whether it's your waypoints or your routes or that sort of thing. Again, that note about pressing the menu button twice to um, get back to the home page from any page on the on the device. There is a ribbon uh, that appears at the bottom of the page if you if you press the page button or the quit button. This is a great shortcut to quickly scroll through the major pages. You see here the map page or messages or the main menu. You can also press the menu button from any page to see a list of additional options for those pages from the home screen. If you press menu, it lets you do things like change the order or which icons appear on your home page. This one, not a lot of people know about, but I actually like this because I can reduce the number of icons that are on my homepage. Say I don't use um, you know, geocaching, if I'm not a geocacher, I can remove that page and then I can actually make my list shorter to the point where maybe I don't have to scroll my homepage. That's a, that's a benefit. So check that out if you want to customize your device. Following along with customization, there is a setup menu. These are, I would not go through all of them, but uh, there are a lot of different options and, and ways to really customize the personality of your device. Some important options that I like to talk about, the profiles page, that allows you to set the personality. You could say that I am mountain biking today or, or tomorrow I'll be mountain climbing. And it does things like change the info fields, um, it changes uh, route calculation, that sort of thing can be, can be customized with your profile settings. Other important pieces here, Looking at Bluetooth to pair my phone, definitely set up Wi-Fi so that you can download things when you're at home uh, quickly to the device. Certainly the tracking interval for sending and reach uh, tracking uh, messages. Those are the kind of things to look at in the setup section of your GPS Map 66i. From here, we're going to look at the major features for in-reach communication, the pages that you might go to. You will use the messages page to send and receive messages, read the replies that you get, that sort of thing. We'll have some details for that in a little bit. The contacts page, this is where you want to go. Remember, you will use the 66i device standalone. Probably a lot of you will use it that way. So you want to make sure that you have added all of the important contacts, the people you want to message while you're out in the backcountry. Make sure that they're on your 66i before you leave so that you can um, have access to their phone numbers. The SOS page, hopefully we don't need to use this, but if we do, there is an SOS page, and uh, that is what you use to send and receive your detailed messages with the Garmin IERCC, or as you see here, to cancel your SOS. Another page that is inReach related, that is the weather page. And, and with inReach weather, you can request a forecast, either land or marine, and it can be a basic forecast or a high detail, having more, uh, more data points lasting you know, more, more days of forecast. And you see here an example, and it shows you your temperature, it shows you uh, the condition, and um, goes out for, for quite a few days for you to gain information about the weather. There's also on the GPS Map 66i, because it can connect to your phone and it can use the phone's cellular uh, data, you can get an active weather forecast. And this is a little more advanced. It has a, um, a weather radar, cloud cover, and that sort of thing. It does require a cell phone connection. It's, it has more data that's involved here. But if you have cell phone coverage, and you're connected to your phone, this is another type of weather that you can use with the GPS Map 66i. Or if you're in the backcountry, that inReach weather forecast. Some additional features for inReach are the inReach utilities pages. We talk a lot about this, so I won't dive too deep. You can test your service, send up to five messages a month just to test to make sure your satellite subscription is working. I like to encourage people to do that before they go out on a big trip. You can also view your plan usage, how much um, how, how many messages have you sent, that sort of thing. And it will break it down based on your plan with how much you have for remaining messages, up to 40 messages in the recreation plan, uh, 10 messages in the safety plan. You see from the screenshot, this user has an unlimited data plan. 
can also use the mail check feature. This is great. It tells you the last time that your that your uh, 66i connected to the satellites and downloaded data. You can also use it to do a mailbox check. And then the last piece is you can view your plan details. And as I mentioned, this user Dana has an unlimited data plan. Um, so good ways to monitor your system at, when you're out in the field. From here, the the mapping features on the device. There's a map page, and this is where you would go, obviously, to see your location on a topographic map, or to see the waypoints or any courses that you've created. The highlight if you're navigating. It's where you would go to see your aerial or satellite imagery that you've downloaded with that bird's eye direct capability. It's also the navigation features where you could go and look at the compass page, and this is very handy because the device has a digital compass. It has um, a compass, a bar barometer, an altimeter, and um, that compass allows you to see your heading and if you're navigating, your bearing, even if you're stationary. So very powerful uh, for folks who want to look at their device while they're stationary and know what direction to go. There's also a trip computer, and this is very customizable. There are lots of different dashboards that you can load, uh, but really it's about sharing statistics about your trip, how long you've been moving, how high you've climbed, that sort of thing. And then I mentioned the uh, the barometric altimeter. This is one of my favorite features on the 66i because it gives you a different way to think about how much further when you when you're traveling. I always have a friend, at least a friend or two, who says how much further on a hike. And so you can say, for for you know climbing, if you're if you're climbing a mountain or or something like that, it's not always linear distance to your destination as much as how much elevation do we have left to climb before we get there. And so you can see the green is what you've accomplished and the blue is what is remaining until you get to your destination. It's a great way to visualize your uh, your hike. <clears throat> the Sight and Go feature is another very useful feature. When you have your 66i with you, you can hold it out. Oh, is that going to be visible? You hold it out in front of you and you can actually sight over the top of the device at a uh, a destination, a desired destination off in the distance, and you see that lock direction option. So you so you hold it and you sight over the cross the, across the top of the device, you hit lock destination uh, lock direction. And then if you come down off of your high point and you no longer see your destination, you're down in a low area with trees and that sort of thing, the device has locked that bearing and you can use it to follow. And it will even tell you if you've gotten off course, help you guide, uh, help guide you back on that path to the object you used the site and go to, to reference. So very, very powerful feature on the GPS map 66i. From there, some navigation and tracking pages that are on the device. I'm gonna kind of lump some of these together. The waypoint manager, course planner, route planner, collection manager, that's all about organizing user data. Everything, um, again, your point objects or your lines that you're gonna use to follow. The collections manager is an extension of the feature that we've built in the Explore app. So I can organize my waypoints and my courses that I've created, say I'm going to climb Mount Rainier, uh, you know, my bucket list hike. I have day one and day two's courses and I have the waypoints from the parking lot to the summit and I put those all into a collection. I can now manage those on the 66i so that I can only show the Mount Rainier hike or, um, you know, just control visible state and that sort of thing. And you use it for syncing. So some some cool things you can do with collections manager. Tracking, that is that in-reach tracking that I talked about that lets you specify uh, the interval of how frequently you send a message to your MapShare site so that friends and family can participate and follow along. Your recording control, that is where you control the high detail breadcrumb trail that gets recorded onto the device. So think about tracking as the messages that get sent to MapShare so people can follow along. Think about tracking as what you use as the device owner, and that's the high detail breadcrumb trail you might use either to, uh, to map out a new trail or to find your way out of the woods if you need to use our track back feature. We'll talk about those towards the end. Uh, re and so recording controls. And then active route and profile, uh, active route shows you the, the route highlight and how you proceed to get to your destination and profile change, that's when I mentioned where I can change my profile from being 
uh, mountain biking and I get info fields around mountain biking or mountain climbing and my info fields change to reflect that different profile. Pretty straightforward. Some other pages worth talking about, we have the notifications. If you have the device connected to your phone, as your phone receives messages, just like your watch might show you a notification, your 66i will show you a notification. And then proximity alarms, this is a fun feature. Set a waypoint, when you get close to it, an alarm goes off. Area calculation and waypoint averaging, this is around gathering data, um, more detailed data or more accurate because you've taken lots of readings. The satellite page tells you, uh, you see here plus or minus 11 feet for GPS accuracy. This is great if you are uh, concerned about getting a highly accurate reading, you wanna check your satellite page. And then sun, moon, and hunt fish, these are some examples of pages that tell you uh, some details about the, the day when you're out. So you, when is sunrise, when is sunset? Pretty, pretty important information for hikers. And also for people who hunt and fish and, and you're interested in the solar tables that that uh, can be used to to predict the quality, uh, you can use that as well for best times to go fishing. Some other pages, the device obviously has lots of different features, but calendars, calculators, alarm clocks, lots of things, because really in this scenario, it's your standalone device, you're not bringing your phone with you. So you can use it for you know your, your Alpine start wake up call, that kind of thing. So let's look a little bit at the Garmin Explore website. We talk about this in most of our webinars, so we won't spend a lot of time, but this is the website where you go to manage your inReach subscription. Uh, that is everything from your subscription plan to your contacts, emergency contacts, that kind of thing. It's where you can go for trip planning, you can create routes, you can create waypoints, you can organize those collections I talked about. It's where you would go after the trip is over to see the data that you captured while you were out on your adventure, uh, so reviewing content. It's also a great tool for importing. Say you you know there's a website that has some some exciting trail data or a set of waypoints for the Appalachian Trail or something like that. You can go there and download that information as well. So how do we use the website? You can manage your subscription. You go to accounts and you can do things like we talk a lot about how important it is to maintain your emergency contacts. Double check these before you go on a trip because you want to make sure if you have an emergency and the Garmin IERCC reaches out to your first and second, your primary and secondary emergency contacts, make sure those are up to date and you know that person is actually available while you're on your trip. Use the Explore site for that. You can also use it to manage your inReach device. You go to uh, Plans and Devices. You can choose to edit your subscription. That lets you move up and down between the plans. That is um, uh, included, you don't have to pay extra to move up and down in plan. So if you have a big adventure coming up, you can put your device into the expedition plan and send as many messages as you want while you're out on the trip. And then when you get home, you can drop back down into the safety plan. So a lot of uh, flexibility with the, with the subscriptions. And then you can also use, um, no, sorry, you can get instructions on how to sync your device using for the 66i using Garmin Express. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's look at the Garmin Explore app because we have made lots of improvements here. And we're really excited about the power of the app and the device for letting people do a lot of things without even needing to go to their computer anymore. We're gonna look at how you use the app to pair your device, pairing and syncing, how you use the app to control in reach features can also download maps, uh, lots of different maps, topo maps, aerial imagery, quad sheets into the, into the app for use in the field. We're gonna look at how you can plan using the app. We're gonna look at course creator, navigating, how you can use that start navigation feature and send that navigate message to your GPS map 66i or to your paired Garmin wearable, lots of flexibility there. And I mentioned syncing, this is where you sync data from your device to the app and then up to the uh, Garmin Cloud, the Explore website. So first, I'm not gonna go through all the steps, but you do use the Explore app to pair your GPS Map 66i. When you log into the app for the first time, the very first page says, do you wanna connect your device? These are the steps to follow. It's very straightforward. You go to the, the Bluetooth settings for phone connecting on the device and then follow the pairing instructions in the Explore app. 
one of the improvements that we've made just recently is you no longer have to use the Garmin Connect mobile app. You can just use the Explore app for folks who are really more about the outdoor backcountry kind of activity with Garmin Explore plus the 66i. So here are your instructions for that. Uh, and then once you've done that to sync uh, with the Garmin Explore, you just need to make sure um, anytime you have your GPS Map 66i turned on and you've completed that pairing process, the device and phone automatically connect and they automatically sync any data you created on the website down into the Explore app, or maybe you created the content in the Explore app. It will sync all of that into the 66i. Any new content in the 66i gets sent back up to sync to the cloud. And yeah, and you can just go and you can double check that that next bullet is just saying, if you go to the devices section of the Explore app, you see your device and it will tell you the status of that syncing process. And then a little note that you do uh, do need to have a cellular data or Wi-Fi connection in order to sync. It's your your phone is using its connectivity to move content from the device to the Garmin cloud. <clears throat> yep, and uh, and uh, also make sure before you go out on your adventure, you've done this important planning. You've created your waypoints and your courses and your collections. Double check on your device, which you'll use standalone in the backcountry. Just review it. Make sure it's there. You can fix, you know, you can do that sync very easily from home. The further into the backcountry you get, the harder it will be to do things like connect to the app, sync data. So just a, a little reminder there. Uh, firmware updates, those are also a very important thing. We've released several firmware updates for the 66i, including the most recent update with Course Creator and some, some cool new features. So install the Garmin Express app on your computer periodically, maybe before your next big trip, plug in the 66i, let Garmin Express sync with it. It will tell you if there are any updates, they're very quick um, to do. And then you'll know that you have the latest updates from Garmin, whether it's a new feature or, or um, you know, a, an update that fixes a bug or something like that. We always, we always release new updates, so keep an eye on that. From here, let's talk a little bit about messaging with the device. Obviously, the the 66i, that in reach letter I there at the end, is an Im important reason that we all purchased this device. And so, for in reach, that's about messaging. And there are custom messages where you type out the full detail of what you want to say. There are also predefined messages that come in two forms. One is a preset message, where you can send as many as you want. They're included in all of our data plans. And those preset messages allow you to send uh, simple things like I'm checking in, everything's okay, or I'm starting here, or I'm finishing my day. And those go out to a preset list of recipients. So it could be, you know, family members or friends that keep a close eye on your, your adventures. Uh, there are also quick text messages, and you can use these. Really, it's in the title. It's a quick text or a quick reply. Uh, and it allows when someone sends you a message, you can pick quickly from this message and send it. And we'll look at how to create these and send them in a second. Uh, you can send messages to people's cell phone numbers and to their email addresses, or if you're lucky and you have a friend who's also using an inReach device and they're out on the trip with you, the two of you can talk to each other using your inReach devices, sending inReach address to address messages. So this is how to create them and management. We won't spend a lot of time. You go to the Explore site, go to the Messages page, you find the preset or quick text, you hit edit, and uh, sorry, hit edit. You get a little dialogue that pops up, make your changes, hit done. Same thing for quick text. Select it, hit edit, make your edit and hit done. Make sure you sync after you do that because that will update the information that's on the device. You can also manage those personal contacts. This is an important step. And a new thing that we wanted to share with people, the Explore app has had for a while, but I, I don't always talk about it the ability to import a contact directly from your phone and put it onto your 66i. This is really powerful because um, it's going to allow you to, uh, to not have to type the name or the phone number, possibly make a mistake. When you type the phone number, it just pulls it from the phone right onto the device. And then when you go off for your hike, you have it on the standalone device. It also stores that phone number up in the Explore cloud, in the, in the Garmin cloud. So great process with the Explore app. 
or you can use the the more manual process in the Explore website where you create a new contact and you type in first name, last name, phone number, email address. Uh, and a good note here, these are uh, personal contacts for messaging. They're not your emergency contacts. The, the two emergency contacts are specified in the, in the account settings section of the Explore website. So how to send a preset message from the 66i. You go into the messages section of the device. You choose, and, the, and hopefully this is very straightforward to people, you choose the send preset option. You select which of the presets you're interested in sending. Send to Carol starting my trip, and then you hit send. Very straightforward. Uh, any messages that you send, uh, those are included in your data plan. You can send as many as you'd like. But when Carol replies, that does count as a message. So uh, you may choose to inform your friends and family that um, you're going to be sending these notes, but you don't really need to hear back from people or consider the um, consider this a shortcut and work your way towards the, the data plans that have more messaging um, allocation. How to send a preset message from the app. Very similar. Select the messages, choose the preset icon. Pick the preset that you'd like to send. You can choose if you want location to be present or not. And then uh, you can see that it's in the, um, and then you can send it. Sorry, select the preset, I got ahead of myself. And then when you select it, that will send that message to Carol. How to send a quick text message. So remember the difference between preset, preset is a, is a pre-canned message to a specific recipient where a quick text might be a reply to somebody. And you can see here, I can't reply now, I'll write later. That's the one I use the most. And the way that would work is someone sends you a message or you could create a new message. But um, when you choose the quick text, then that is, and so you could choose the recipient or you could be replying to somebody, but then you choose the message. So if I receive a message from a relative and they wanna know how the hike is going, but I'm in the middle of a, of a, a hard climb or something and I just don't quite have the time, I like them to know that I got the message, everything's okay, but I may I may fire off this quick text message that says, I can't reply now, I'll write later. And then I hit send, and so Dana would receive that. And both of the quick text messages, sending them and receiving replies to them do count against your message allocation because you can send to, um, to anyone a quick text message. It's not just that preset list. How to send quick text from the app, same idea, choose messages, choose new message, specify who you want it to go to, pick the quick text, select it from the list of 20, and then choose if you want a location or not, and then hit send. <clears throat> Excuse me, just get a quick drink. There, that's better, so select send. So to send a custom message with our 66i, this is about being actually able to use the keyboard and type in exactly what you're experiencing. You go to the messages page. You can either create a new message or reply to somebody. You can choose to type the message and then you use the keyboard. And so with this keyboard, I can pretty quickly type in, meet you at the trailhead, throw in an emoji, choose done. And when I hit send, I would send the message to myself. Both of these messages sending and receive count against your message. Um, allocation. Some shortcuts for the uh, using the 66i, one of them that we really are pleased with, we worked hard to make it more convenient to quickly send messages. As you type, the device will provide suggested words just like your phone does. So you see here I've typed part of meet, then I could even select the word you and I could kind of plug in some of those some of those words and make it faster to type. There are keyboard shortcuts for this. One of those shortcuts, as I mentioned before, if I press find, it jumps the highlight up into those suggest, uh, suggested autocomplete words. I can also use page um, to change the keyboard. I can use the plus and minus symbols to do backspaces and spaces. So just some things to try and make it easier and faster to enter text. And then of course, who could possibly go without having emojis to um, express you know how things are going with the with the cute little symbol. So check out the emojis the next time you're hiking. You can send smiley faces and and uh, sunshine. So lots of fun with the 66i keyboard. 
custom messages from the app, pretty clean. I, I choose messages, compose, who do I want to send it to? And then I get my full keyboard and I can use the include or not the location. Um, so people, that's, that's how you let people know where you were when you sent the message. So it kind of adds a little flavor to the message you sent. They get a link, they can see it on the map. Click send. And, and custom messages you pay when you send and receive. One of the important parts of the 66i is that high detail uh, topographic map that comes preloaded, shows you all kinds of cool things, contours, elevation, summits, uh, rivers, lakes, geographic points. Your map has your uh, current location represented with an arrow that moves as you hike. You can zoom in and out. Uh, you see waypoint labels, all kinds of great things. When you are when you are hiking, your breadcrumb trail by default shows up as that uh, that blue line, the, the teal line behind you, and the uh, course to your summit is that magenta purple line out in front of you. So it shows you where you've been and where you're going. And the menu for map controls are there to help with lots of additional um, configuration. Another very exciting thing with the 66i, it has an SD card slot on the side, so you can purchase one of Garmin's additional premium maps, or it has a, a considerable amount of internal memory. You can download maps to store on the device, and those additional maps are available on Garmin's website, and they are maps like the uh, Topo US 24K, that's a 1 to 24K topographic map, there is a trailhead series like you see here. I've, I've pulled in some screenshots from the uh, Appalachian Trail uh, trailhead series. And you can see as I zoom in, the, the, uh, this is the northern terminus of the Appalachian Trail in Mount Katahdin with Baxter Peak. And so this is special data gathered by Garmin for the AT. There's also a Hunt View series that has uh, parcels and, and land ownership and aerial imagery, all kinds of great things that you can add to the device. Some steps here on how to how to install this. It's all about making the purchase and then connecting through Express and then viewing the tools and content and purchase. And you can download that data onto the device. As I mentioned, it has an SD card slot. You could also buy the SD card and just plug it in. Uh, and, and you can store the extra data there as well. This is bird's eye satellite imagery, which we've talked a little bit about. Here's the process for doing that. You go to the bird's eye page, you choose download imagery. It will want to know is it, uh, you know, for what location. You can browse to the location, give it a name, choose the detail level, and then select download. And uh, when you're finished, you have this Bradbury hike file that's on your device. A great feature that that imagery is very powerful. Um, if you're above tree line, uh, you can see things like trails right on the ground in, in the trails um, that are that are on the mountain. If you are down in the forested area, it's a great tool. If you need to try and find uh, clearings, that sort of thing, you can see all of that. Um, in fact, in this Bradbury picture, you can see the rock outcropping and Bradbury that's uh, in the woods. So aerial imagery is a really powerful tool. Adding maps to the Explore app. This is Another feature, uh, we've made some improvements. They now, we have an automatic download process. So when you install the app and you open the app for the first time, it automatically downloads the base data. You used to have to do that manually. That base data downloads to give you some reference as you look for your detailed map. When you zoom in on your current location by GPS, it will automatically download topographic data for your state. And then as you pan around and you get to a new area, we'll download that as well. If you would like to change the map type that's being downloaded, say your plan is to go hike in Mount Washington, you pan to that area, it automatically downloads the topographic map. You can then go to maps and download maps and show more map types and you can select the color aerial imagery. When you go back to the map, it will download the first chunk of color aerial imagery for where you are. And then you just pan to a new location, it will download color aerial imagery for that spot. Switch to quad sheets, it will automatically download and that sort of thing. Um, you can then manage those map layers to pick which of the map layers that you've downloaded that you want to see by going into maps and choosing, in this example, Topo Active. Looking at map share, this is 
very important part of the system. We talk about this in all of our webinars. This is where your friends and family go to follow along during your adventure. Uh, MapShare is very, very uh, useful because friends and family can go there. They can select you as the user and they can send you a message. Uh, so this is great if you want to post your MapShare link on your, you know, your social media page, Facebook or Twitter, then all of your friends and family can follow along while you're on your adventure. To set this up, you go into MapShare Social and uh, you can turn it on uh, and then you can configure things like the URL, you can make some setting changes, that sort of thing to, to personalize the page and then you can also control what people have access to, whether, whether they can send you a message or not, you have full control over that and put a password on it, or anything like that. Um, and that note, MapShare is the only option for friends and family to initiate a message if you didn't contact them first. Many ways to share MapShare. You can do it from the website, you can do it from the app, you can do it from the 66i. Um, just noting the time, I'm going to move a little bit quicker to talk about some of the important details. Um, some, some terminology that we believe is important to share as we release these updates, the course creator feature for the GPS Map 66i, the course creator feature for the uh, Explore app. You obviously you're noticing a transition for Garmin from the previous route metaphor. Now everything we're creating is courses, and that's because a course is actually a much more versatile, flexible file format or tool than a route. A course has those. Um, itinerary points like where you're going to stop and have lunch and where you're going to camp and the summit of your mountain it can capture all of those but it can also capture the shaping points of your trip the same way that a track used to so think of a course as the best of a route and the best of a track brought together the device and the app still support routes and they support tracks but we will create courses moving forward courses on the 66i courses in the explore app um, and then a route is what we're familiar with from the past that was a series of itinerary points where the device then calculated that route a track is a recording of um, where you traveled or possibly something you planned in in a series of points and that's also what you see here uh, the difference between an activity recording which is the the new term we use instead of track, because track it sometimes can be confused with the data that gets sent over Iridium to MapShare. So tracking with an in-reach device means sending a message over the Iridium satellite to your MapShare page. An activity recording, or what used to be a track recording, is writing that data, every GPS reading, into a file and storing it on the device. So tracking over Iridium is for friends and family to follow along activity recordings are for you to use on your device while you're hiking or after for reviewing but that would be the detail of the trail that you were trying to map or the breadcrumb trail that you might need to use in a track back if you get turned around and you need to find your way back to something familiar you could use track back of your activity recording um, so try, trying to nail down some of the terminology that we use but think about courses for the future and activity recordings and um, you know the the in-reach content for tracking. So tracking and recording, as I've I mentioned several times, that uh, the tracking feature is sending those track points to your MapShare page. And this is how you start and stop tracking on the 66i. You go to the tracking page, start and stop. Very straightforward. How to do the same thing in the Explore app? Go to Devices, choose your device, and then in the tracking section, same idea. Start and stop tracking configure the tracking interval recording now this is again this is mapping that high detail trail or creating the track the activity recording to find your way out of the woods you can control that with the recording control and that allows you to to pause and resume or save that high detail recording onto the device for for your own use not for map share for friends and family but for your own use and uh, again, recording controls around stopping and pausing and saving. The trackback feature, this is something that is in all of our Garmin devices, but we really are trying to make sure people are aware that the device is recording your activity 
And if you get turned around, you can use your track back to find your way out of the woods. Make sure that you have in your, um, on your device, you can go to your recording controls. You can slide over to the tab that is the map tab, and then you can choose that track back and it will take your current activity, it will turn it into a route and we'll show you how to follow it out of the woods. Uh, and when you get back to someplace familiar, you can choose to stop navigating. Activity profiles, I've talked a bunch about this. This is where you go in to change whether you're hiking or mountain biking. Give it a look, it's very straightforward. Um, a, a cool feature, mountain biking. For navigation, this is the part we were talking about, um, how to create waypoints in the website. I'm not gonna spend time here, we all know how to do that. How to create waypoints in the app. From the map, you hit the plus symbol and one of your options is to create a new waypoint. Um, and uh, so, yep, select the map page, click the plus, I got ahead of myself, and create waypoint. And then you can choose to create waypoint from the, from the if you tap on the map, that's another way to create a waypoint. So, you, so the first one was clicking the plus, that creates the waypoint at your current GPS location. The other one is to tap on the map and it comes up with a list of uh, information about where you tapped and then you can choose create waypoint. Sorry, got a little confusing there. Um, but really just two different ways to create the waypoint and save it. To create a waypoint on the 66i, you press that mark button and then you enter in your details and that saves it. Uh, to navigate to a waypoint from the device, you can go to waypoint manager, pick the waypoint that you're interested in, choose view on map and then go. Very straightforward. Um, from the Explore app, you can go to your waypoints list. Again, choose the waypoint, choose navigate from the, um, the, the more option in the top, and then that will also create the route. So this new feature, and I'll take it just a little bit of time, and I see we're getting long in our, in our time. I wanna save time for questions, but creating a course is a new feature and it's important, and I wanna talk to everyone about it. You can create a course in the Explore app in a very simple process now where you go into the map page and you choose from that plus symbol where we went to create our waypoint. You can create a course and it will take you to this course creation tool. There is a tutorial. Um, I didn't show a screenshot of it, but the tutorial will walk you through the steps. Hopefully you've seen that if you've been using Explore recently. But the really nice thing about this is this allows you to tap on the map for your start, tap on the map for your finish, and it will automatically follow the roads and trails to, to connect those points. You don't have to do the multi-point tap, tap, tap thing anymore. Very powerful. If you find that it didn't choose the trail you wanted, so for this probably it would have just gone down the road, I can tap and hold on the uh, route highlight, or the, excuse me, the course highlight, and I can drag that to the trail or road that I wanna follow experiment with that, uh, get familiar with it, it's, it's great because now you have course creation with you in the field. So if you're camping and you decide that you wanna go climb a mountain and if you hadn't planned it ahead of time on the website, you can now do that planning on the phone in the Explore app and sync it to the GPS map 66i um, you know, from your tent before you strike off and then you have it. So very, very powerful, have it with you when you're on the trail. Uh, and oh, I'm sorry, and then there is the ability, if you find you want to bushwhack or go off trail, you can move between the automatic following road and trail and a more direct approach where it will leave the trail where you indicate and, and just follow your tapped line to something that doesn't have any trail data around it. So very flexible, very pleased with the work the team did to pull that together. Um, and then details that I already talked about, how to move a point, how to move the course, and then save it. Follow the tutorial, that's your best pro, and then you have it added to your list. There is also a feature to create courses on the 66i. To create courses there, you choose create course, you decide do I want to use the traditional direct path where, um, where it's just straight line like in the Explorer app previously, or do you want to follow roads and trails? If you choose roads and trails, they're going to ask you to select a point. You can use the map to pick that point, uh, or you can use find or, or pick from an existing waypoint. When you use the map, you can pan your highlight and you can click on a point 
and choose to use that. And then as you add subsequent points, it will build out your course, but you don't have to click on all of the points in between to make it follow the trail. That's the power of the course creator feature. Um, and then once you've built it and you choose done, uh, it creates the course uh, that you would then use when you're out navigating. And so here's our navigating a course section. And you see, um, this will pick from the list of existing courses. We're not creating one, we're actually now going to navigate it. So I can choose the course planner folder and I can pick the course that I'm interested in and it will give me a preview of this of the course that I'm going to follow. And then I can choose go. Same idea from the uh, Explore app. I go to my library, I choose the course that I'm interested in. I, uh, I, I select the course, there it is, sorry, select the course. And then I choose from the menu, uh, the three dot more option, I choose navigate. And the cool piece here, and I, I mentioned this before, and I wish I had called it out a little more now that I look at it, but when I select navigate from the Explore app, it tells my GPS Map 66i to start navigating. Not only does it navigate in my app, but it tells the 66i to start navigating. It would also bring up a list of all of my connected Garmin devices. So when I hike, I have, you know, I have my Phoenix watch with me. I have my GPS Map 66i. That one action of start navigating from the Explore app tells both of those devices to start navigating and the whole system has the information I need. So I have the topographic map on my 66i. I have the detailed information on my phone if I need to pull that out of my pocket. And I'm getting that elevation plot that we looked at on my Phoenix watch. So really powerful way to bring the whole system together with that start navigating feature. Still have the ability to create routes in the Explore site. I might say this is a useful tool for someone who really likes to do their planning on a large computer. Um, unfortunately, you still have to do that tap, tap, tap thing. So I might say in this scenario, give a look at the Explore app on your phone because you just tap for this, the car and Mount Madison and it would automatically draw that in. If you prefer the website approach though, the tool is still there for you. Navigating that route, same idea, pick it from the list, see a preview of it, choose go. Also from the Explore app, you can choose to navigate um, your route and pick it from the list and choose navigate. Um, managing collections, this is something we've talked about before, so we won't spend a lot of time. You create that collection on the Explore website or in the app. You can then send it down to the device, sync it, and then you would use the collections manager to pick it from the list. And that allows you to only show one collection. So if you have hundreds of waypoints and it's kind of tedious to sort through those lists, you can turn off all of the collections except for your Mount Rainier hike, and then your list is much smaller. Some navigation tips. Uh, definitely want to make sure that you are using the um, elevation tool. So you can go in and view a course and you can see that elevation a great way to visualize the adventure the, the adventure you've planned same idea in the explore app from the library choose courses and profile and you get a nice visual representation of your hike additional navigation tips you can import uh, gpx data with the explore app this is great if you have again that third-party website with uh, special trail data or special waypoint data, you can just consume it right into the Explore app and, and send it down to your uh, GPS map 66i. And so you go to the map and import GPX, select it from your phone because you had to pull the file into your phone. And then when the import is complete, you see that data, the Saga River canoe trip. Weather forecast, gonna move quickly. You can get your weather forecast from the device New forecast, get forecast, there's your forecast. Same thing with the app. You just go into your device, you choose weather. Do you want a basic or a premium forecast uh, for your location or for some other location? And here is your forecast, 30 degrees and sunny uh, for today. And then active weather, we talked about this. Make sure that you have a cell phone connection with your phone to your 66i because it's going to use cellular data to pull that in and then you can get things like a weather radar or cloud cover 
that, that sort of thing does require cell phone coverage is not the same as an in-reach satellite forecast. SOS, very important. We have we have lots of SOS webinars, um, and I and I think I'm going to move so we can answer some questions for people. But SOS um, capabilities with the device that uses the Garmin International Emergency Response and Coordination Center and 100% um, coverage, 24/7, uh, and uh, they do tracking during SOS. So. So very important here, the process for that, you declare the tr you know, trigger the SOS with the 66i from the button on the side of the device, lift the cover, press and hold the button, 20 second countdown timer, and then you're in the middle of your SOS uh, messaging with Garmin IERCC. You can press and hold uh, the button to cancel, uh, excuse me, cancel SOS in the interface if you need to. Then from the app, to trigger the SOS, you go into the Devices page the same way, choose SOS, and you have to slide to activate. It does require two physical actions, so you slide that SOS button across that starts the SOS for you. Same countdown timer, and then you're into your conversation with the IERCC. Make sure you cancel it if you no longer need assistance. Very good. And you have to have a paired Garmin device. You can't declare an SOS from the Explorer app if you don't have your in-reach device. You're, you're a remote control to the device in this situation. Uh, some messaging tips. We do talk about how uh, Garmin, the, the IERCC may send a message from local area search and rescue with a phone number. If that happens, you can actually select the message where they say, send a message to this number. And when you select it, it will actually kick off a conversation with that person. So that's very handy shortcut. You don't have to type the message or memorize it. You just pick it. Um, and that was the last slide. It snuck up on me. Uh, here's some additional resources we like to tell people about. The first one, the Garmin Explore site. We, we talked about it today. That's where you go to manage your device and your account. The Garmin Support site is a great resource. Our marketing teams and our support teams these webinars, lots of content from that, those groups are there. Manuals, how-tos, product videos, past webinars like this one. And then my favorite uh, spot I like to tell people about, the Garmin blog. Go there and read about the latest, uh, any uh, in-reach adventures that we have, we like to share there. Folks like yourselves who have had SOS stories and you like to share them with us so that we can pass them along to our, our, our um, users. You can see that all on the Garmin blog. Uh, 